Student Live Student Voices is being brought to you as a service of Ken Stopel Ford, Central Texas Electric Co-op, Totality Over Texas, Vogel Tractors, Joseph Financial Partners, Medical Arts Pharmacy, and Celebrity Care Medical Clinic. Welcome to Student Live Student Voices, a production of HC Broadcasting and KNAFAM 910. This series encourages conversations about the topics that matter to young people and the issues that affect them. Our goal is to engage students in these conversations as well as in the solutions created. Time now for Student Lives, Student Voices. As part of Student Lives, Student Voices today, we're going to hear from three students and their instructor who are all part of the Health Sciences Pathway in the career tracks at Fredericksburg ISD. We're going to let them tell their own stories and let you hear from the future generations who are going to be your health care providers in the next decade. The instructor is Desiree Bermudez, and we have Emma Reber, Journey Lombardi, and Valeria Ramirez. And first up, we're going to be talking to Journey. Thank you so much for being here today, Journey. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so, um, what appealed to you about the pathway that you are on? And then you can tell us what pathway you're on. What appealed to you about it? Um, so, since childhood, I've always wanted to be a nurse. Um, and, you know, I've just always looked into the medical field. And I chose medical field when I was in middle school. Um, and when I was adopted at 16, my I have a special needs sister who I always have to take care of her medical needs and stuff sometimes and I have two other sisters who are nurses so that also helps for me to get an inside and just show that I like I actually like what they do and stuff. Oh that's exciting so you got a real world view of things before you got an insider view of things. That's yes. What pathway are you on? Um, so right now, um, I'm through the health science pathway, and I'm going to I'm going to go to Angela State University next year, start my first year of college, and my hopes are to become an RN. Um, and right now, through health science clinical, um, I have a certificate in BLS, That's which is basic life support. Is there something about the classes or the experiences that you have had that have really stood out to you? Something that lets you know that this was the profession or the career that you really wanted um, to be a part of? Um, well, through Health Science Clinicals, we get to go to the hospital and see um, the different views or places in the hospital and how they all work. And I know for me, there's some places I go to where I'm like, well, I like this, but I wouldn't want to do it every day, mm -hmm. um, which is also good to know because you may like it one day, but you don't want to do it every day. And for someone like me who's indecisive, it's really helpful to learn and see the different views of how everything's going on in the hospital. Are there any experiences or anything that you had that let you know that being a registered nurse is the direction you wanted to go? This week I was in med surge and I just got to shadow the nurses and um, it was just, I... I couldn't even tell you what stood out to me, but I was like, oh, I, I would like to do this every single day, just talking to the patients and giving them the medicine. Um, and I am very verbal and like to talk, so that's <laughs> that definitely appeals to me. Um, and I'm very organized, so how they have everything um, set to where they can give the medicine, I appreciated. Um, and I also, at one point, looked into being a surgeon, but I know that that much schooling is not for me. <laughs> Personally, I always go back to a registered nurse, which made me realize that that's, that's where my heart is always. But I do think the school has a great way of providing steps for us um, to succeeding for when we get out of high school. Learning how to do these things, learning to even just learn, like doing this program and having to take these steps and do all of these things, that's a form of learning in itself. What do you think you would take away from this that you'll actually get to use um, in your college program as well and, and throughout your career? Well, I know for me, um, I am not the best like memorizer with stuff. So taking some of these harder classes um, and memorizing some of the like words you use in the medical field you don't see every day so you don't know them and you're like this was a word so I think that uh, that will help me in the long run for when I am going to go to nursing school and um, 
so that I have a greater view of what it's like, as well as going to the hospital through health science clinicals. We get to see how they, the nurses use these words every day and how it is helpful. And it's not like we're just learning these words for no reason. That makes sense. And have you been able to have conversations with the nurses and others that you're there that have been inspiring to you or at least informed some aspect of, of what you're thinking about for the career or? Yeah, every time we go, the nurses are super nice about asking um, what we want to do and if we're looking into their field or just the medical field in general. And I haven't met one that's dis disencouraging. They're all very encouraging. One told me he was like, just, it may be hard, but just go all the way. It's... <laughs> You, you're going to want to go all the way. And I was like, you know, that's a good, just go all the way. It's like, Dory's just keep swimming. <laughs> what are some of the toughest lessons that you've learned or things that you've had to deal with that, that you can talk about within the realm of HIPAA? What are some of the challenges that you've had that you're like, I can't believe I did that, but I actually did that? Um, so actually just the other day, I'm a very emotional person and I, I cry a lot. I... I really do. Um, when I get nervous, I cry. When I'm happy, I cry. When I'm sad, I cry. I just cry. Um, <laughs> and the other day, there were we were in the room, and all the doctors were talking to this lady, and she was just the way she was talking. I wanted to cry, but no one else was crying, and I was like, if I'm not allowed to cry, I can't do this. I don't know what like how, why are they not crying? Um, I would be crying all the time. But then I ended up talking to some of my sisters that night, and they were like, no, we cry all the time. Like, it's normal. You cry. And I was like, okay, good. But that was probably that moment I was, like, rethinking everything. I was like, if I can't cry, I wouldn't survive. So, it's just, I'm very emotional. And that was very hard for me to keep my tears in. Well, and that's, so Standing is there in. anything I haven't asked you that you would like to make sure gets out about the program or about uh, your pathway or anything like that? Well, I just think it should be known that Health Science Clinicals is a really good class. Some people, it's a double block class, so some people are like, oh, I don't really want to fit that into my schedule when I could rather go home early or something. But it definitely helps um, to see there's so many different areas of the hospital um, and you may not want to be a nurse, but you may want to be in cardiac rehab and you don't know. So I think it's just such an amazing opportunity that the school has for us and to take advantage of it. We'll be back with more stories of the future coming up. This is Steve Maxwell here at Texas Rebel Radio. And I want to talk to you just a second about Ken Stoppel Ford in Kerrville. They're not just a great company to buy your next vehicle from or to get your vehicle serviced. The Stoppels are deeply involved in the communities they serve. They give you their time and resources to Habitat for Humanity, Junior Livestock Scholarships, Kirk County Young Life, Harper and Medina Volunteer Fire Departments, Big Brothers and Big Sisters, The United Way, and many more. They touch every community in this listening area in some way. There are some good companies in our Texas Hill Country, but the one company that stands out as an advocate for all of us is Ken Stoppel Ford. When you consider purchasing your next vehicle or servicing the ones you have, please give Ken Stoppel Ford a chance to show you what they are all about. Honesty, integrity, and a willingness to get involved in their Hill Country community. They have been Hill Country proud since 1966, and they would love nothing more than to prove it to you. Find them at StoppelFord.com. CTEC is a proud sponsor of Student Life, Student Voices. From lighting up your homes to powering local businesses, we've been your reliable source of energy for over 75 years. But CTEC is not just about electricity. From sponsoring local school programs to supporting community events, Central Texas Electric Co-op is all about giving back. In fact, concern for community is one of our guiding principles. With every flip of the switch, we're working together to build a brighter future. Visit our website or drop by our office today. Central Texas Electric Co-op, powering homes, empowering communities. Welcome back to Student Live, Student Voices, a production of HC Broadcasting and KNAFAM 910. 
This segment of Student Lives, Student Voices is going to start with a quick reminder of what the CTE program actually is that these students are involved in, and then we'll do a quick overview of uh, provided by instructor Desiree Bermudez. Career and Technical Education, or CTE, replaced vocational education in 2006 as part of the Career and Technical Education Act also known as the Carl D. Perkins Law. The Texas Education Agency uses the term CTE at the state level. Participating in CTE programs emphasizes real-world and classroom learning for students, and it focuses on preparing them for careers in current or emerging professions, as well as college or further study. Hello, and thank you for being on Student Live Student Voices with us. We really appreciate it. Um, could you please tell us your name and uh, what you do at the school? Uh, so my name is Desiree Bermudez, and I am a health science uh, clinical instructor at Fredericksburg High School. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in nursing and am a registered nurse, and so that allows me to help teach the healthcare portion at Fredericksburg. Excellent. And so how did you know that you wanted to get into the health field and then switch over into the teaching field? Um, so it's actually kind of, um, this is a brought to bringing together two interests that I had. In high school, I was sort of interested in um, becoming uh, a teacher going through education, the education field, and I was also very interested in healthcare. And so um, for me and for where I was in life, going into the healthcare field worked out really well. And um, I enjoyed it and kind of progressed from um, LVN school to RN school to becoming a, um, having my bachelor's degree. And then after several years of working in the field. Um, I've been a nurse in the field for about 15 years now. I thought that um, I'd like to be able to give some advice to the kids going into the field. And so I started looking at the education opportunities and this all kind of came together. That's so. So, cool. so are you from Fredericksburg? I grew up in Harper. Oh, I'm wow. a graduate of Harper High School Very um, cool. and then have lived in Fredericksburg since. And so um, my husband and I have three kids that are here and um, through going through Fredericksburg ISD, uh, two in high school, one in middle school. And so it's uh, a community I've kind of been raised in. Even in our health science clinicals, they learn um, first aid, they learn CPR, they get CPR certified, um, they go through concussion training, seizure wow. training, uh, stop the bleed. They learn all kinds of um, life skills that, you know, at some point in time, you never know where you're going to be and something True. happens and um, they have that skill set going into the real world to be able to. The ones going into the healthcare path, what do you see as as the traits that carry them carry them through? Um, I think obviously maturity, obviously right uh, focus. Um, but what else do you see? Empathy. They're very empathetic. They're very um, caring people. They're ones that um, in their class are also show a lot of leadership skills. Um, they're just kind of those natural born leaders. They're the ones wanting to find that. Um, they're taking those initiatives. They're finding those opportunities for themselves. Um, they're they love that caring interpersonal interaction with um, people and it translates very well into the healthcare field because you're constantly taking care of people and so um, that empathy is probably one of the greatest ones that I see in, well, in with those Tom students. Reader. I'm a junior and I'm in the health science clinical class this year and I'm interested in going to medical school so um, I'm not exactly sure where I'll end up at college um, I'm looking into Texas A&M, but I'm just really excited for whatever happens. Very exciting. And so how did you come to this particular pathway? What drew you to it? Well, I have a family of medical people, like my, <laughs> my mom and grandpa are doctors, and my dad's also in the medical field. So I've just grown up around it. I kind of didn't see anything else. So I have always always wanted to be a doctor like ever since I was little I feel like I was one of the only little kids that was like yep I'm gonna be a doctor <laughs> um, but that's what kind of drew me to it and then this class has really like being able to go to the hospital see everything in real life has really solidified that decision for me that's exciting what are some of the things that you've encountered either in classes or on your rotations or both that have made you go yep this was definitely the right direction for me well 
So in freshman and sophomore year, I took like all the learning parts of it, all learning the medical terminology, pharmacology, all that stuff. And I just, it clicked, like it, everything made sense. Um, I was able to just talk to my mom about her profession as if like I knew what she was talking about. And that was really great. And I loved being like a student who could just answer the questions, not even not even really think about it. It just all made sense in my brain. Excellent. And then this year with doing the rotations, I ask so many questions. Like I can't stop talking to these people. Like I'm asking so many, I feel like I'm bugging them, but I just ask so many questions and I'm just so interested. So I just knew that this was what I wanted to do. What's different about taking these types of courses than say your other types of courses in in school? Um, do you have other ones that, that feel like they support your professional choices for the future? I've been taking advanced academic classes since ever because I didn't grow up in Fredericksburg I grew up in Houston I went to a really hard school and then I moved here and like went all AP all pre AP all that stuff and so I am a big math and science I, since I've always known I wanted to go to medical school I did I planned my um, courses around that mm. um, those classes definitely back up like what I'll need like technicality wise I guess because I've looked into my major but with high school uh, with sorry health science clinical we are able to actually see in person like a glimpse of what my future will look like kind of see what different um, fields in the medical um, medical pathway like what I'm interested in and just see hands-on like real life experience not just textbooks and all that stuff. Did they have something similar in Houston in terms of pathways? Did you already know you'd be able to do this or was this something you kind of encountered when you came to Fredericksburg? I encountered it in Fredericksburg. I um my school that I was in in Houston only went up to eighth grade, so I actually didn't know where I was going to go to high school, but then we decided to move here, so there's only one, <laughs> one real option. Um, but then when I first um, met with a guidance counselor, she told me everything about my, the health science endorsement, which is what I knew I wanted to do, because I had kind of researched Fredericksburg High School. I saw that there was this pathway. I got super excited, and... Um, so she kind of told me a little about it, a little bit about it. So freshman year, I've just been excited for junior year when I was able to do this. That's so. And you talked about that you talk a lot with the the uh, the people at the hospital. Um, is there any conversations you've had that have been particularly inspiring, or events that you've dealt with in the same way that were a challenge to you that you were really like, I'm so glad I got through that, or anything that you feel like was a growth experience for you that you weren't expecting? I actually, during my rotation in the lab, I was able to get one-on-one -on -one time with the doctor for about an hour, and that was amazing. <laughs> she just kind of um, helped me understand, like, because of course I have my mom, I have my grandpa, but they're like my family, so I don't necessarily listen to them, but um, <laughs> I, it was great to have, like, someone who was super into teaching me and she was kind of giving me all the advice because I like I had told her going in like I want to go to med school like I, I'm passionate about it so she kind of treated me as if someone like she believed in me you know and so she oh, she was kind of giving me all this advice because of course she went through it so um that was great I haven't had anything I would say that I didn't think I was going to get through that I was relieved I haven't I've kind of handled everything at the hospital. Like, there's been nothing too chaotic. So I've just loved every bit of it. It's, oh, it's been great. So, <laughs> so if you were to talk to a middle school student who's starting the process of thinking about, you know, if they want to join, what pathway they want to join, um, what would you suggest to them in terms of this pathway? What would they need to think about or know about themselves? So my sister is actually an eighth grader. So oh. I've had this conversation many times. <laughs> so she wants to be a vet. And... Um, but also maybe in the medical field. But I would kind of, I would, first of all, I, I explain everything that I've been doing, all the classes. I just kind of lay out what needs to happen to be able to graduate, I guess, just the mm -hmm. first baseline classes. And then just, I really love this class because like not everyone's able to do that. Go mm -hmm. and shadow people and be able to see like some pretty like real stuff, you know? So, um, I've told my sister that, like, even if you don't want to be in the medical field or, like, even if you're thinking about it a little bit, like, it's great to just get um, all this knowledge, like, because it helps you in life, like, knowing about mm -hmm. how the body works, like, what, like, diseases there are. It's just really 
helpful to have all that knowledge, even if you aren't going to be a nurse doctor or whatever. So just kind of talk to middle schoolers, because a lot of them actually say that they want to be nurses. I I just encounter a lot of middle schoolers who just want to be in the medical (laughs) field somehow. I don't know how that happens, but um, I just kind of give them the same advice, tell them what I've experienced, and if they ask any questions, I mean, I try to encourage them as much as possible. (laughs) Calling all Eclipse visionaries. Totality Over Texas, based here in Fredericksburg, has all your Eclipse essentials covered. ISO certified Eclipse glasses, commemorative t-shirts, and more. All custom designed with Texas in mind. It's time to get ready for the ultimate celestial spectacle. Visit www.totalityovertx.com and make sure all eyes are on you during the eclipse. That's totalityovertexas.com. Vogel Tractors is the Texas Hill Country source for pre-owned tractors. They offer new and used implements and attachments for landscaping, tillage and harvest, as well as small construction machines and attachments. Their inventory includes new equipment from Rhino, Armstrong Ag, Industrious America, Mohawk, Ag Meyer, and more. Every tractor at Vogels is thoroughly inspected, serviced, and field tested to ensure that they're field ready. Your trade-in is welcomed at Vogel Tractors, and financing options as well as nationwide delivery is available. The Vogels are successful sixth-generation Texas German farmers and ranchers who know what it takes to work the land. So when you need a tractor or a piece of associated equipment, visit your Hill Country neighbors at Vogel Tractors, 12 miles east of Fredericksburg on U.S. Highway 290, or find them online at vogeltractors.com. That's V-O-G-E-L tractors.com. Welcome back to Student Live Student Voices, a production of HC Broadcasting and KNAFAM 910. I'm Valeria Ramirez, and I'm a senior, and I'm in the pharmacy tech class. Excellent. And I also understand you are president of HOSA. Yes, I am. Excellent. Um, And so you also had gone through the clinical side, right? Yes. So what was it about pharmacy tech that attracted you? What did you, what do you like about it? Um, Well, we were only really given two options between, okay, so in our school, we're really limited to only EMT or pharmacy tech, Mm -hmm. but in pharmacy tech, we, it kind of helps you in every medical, like, field you want to go to because we learn about different medications, dosages, so it helps you in the different medical fields. Like, you can, you have to know about medications if you want to be a nurse, if you want to be a doctor, so... If you want to be a pharmacist. That makes perfect sense. That makes very cool. Oh, that's very cool. Thank you. That explains a lot to me, actually, too, as well. So how did you know that you wanted to take this pathway? You ha- When did you have to choose? When you were a freshman or middle school? As a freshman. As yes. a freshman. How did you know that this was a pathway that was interesting to you? Um, I've always also wanted to be a doctor, but whenever I went into high school, I was, they put me in the medical classes just because I needed some stuff for, like, my schedule, because I wasn't really given the option to choose my schedule. They chose it for me. <laughs> But luckily, they put me in the medical classes that I wanted to do. And I going into it, I wanted to be a doctor. But in my medical classes, I learned more stuff. I got to see the different medical fields. And then I changed my mind and wanted to become an orthopedic surgeon. Well, do you think that this was something, this was a decision you'd have made this early on if you hadn't had a chance to go through the pathway? Probably not. I probably would have still been indecisive if it wasn't for these classes because going to clinicals, I was able to go to the hospital and actually see the orthopedic surgeons and what they do. And it gave me like better like understanding of it. And it made me realize that I did want to become an orthopedic surgeon. So what are some of the experiences and again, within the realm of HIPAA and things you could talk about that you had that made you go, oh, yeah, this is this is definitely the track I want to take. Compelling. Um, So whenever we would go to the a health hospital we were able to actually go in and see surgeries and see how they did them on patients and stuff so it was really nice to be able like to actually see surgeries and at first I was like I'm gonna be scared this is not what I want to do like it's like it's gross but then I changed <laughs> my mind and I was like I actually like like we were go- we would go and we would go to the um, hospital and we would be in there in different areas of the hospital and the other areas just weren't as interesting as the like OR and being able to see surgeries was to me and I actually got to talk to one of the surgeons one-on-one and we like had multiple conversations where he like helped me and like explained to me more what he did how did he he, how he went to college and what he did to get to where he was. So what does uh, appeal to you about orthopedic surgery? Um, I've always 
like I've liked playing sports a lot and growing up my sisters were always injured like they played soccer so they would always get hurt and stuff and they would be around orthopedic surgeons a lot so like I was little and going to surgeries with them and stuff I wouldn't be in there but like they would tell me like about how they got a surgery and stuff. What's different about taking these courses in this pathway or having these experiences at the hospital than other areas? What are the different kinds of things you learn um, about yourself going through this pathway versus maybe some of your other classes? Um, so in my other classes, they're not really as like focused on a certain path. Like you can learn English and math and stuff, but it's not like going towards like a certain thing. Like it's just the core classes you need to learn. But in the medical classes, like, like I said, you, there's multiple areas you can learn about and you can learn like we learned about nursing, pharmacists, all the different job services in the medical field, and you really get to experience which ones you like and which ones you don't like, which, like in math and English, you don't really like get to choose. You just have to take those classes. So you can do the, which classes you like and which ones you don't want to. And is there something um, about the pathway or the program or just the people that you met at the hospital that um, I haven't asked you about but that you'd like people to know about? Yeah. Okay, so coming into like all of these classes can be like very, like scary and like you, you if you're very confused about what you want to do it, but it definitely like will help you realize that there is a lot of things in the medical field even if you don't like that you may not know about and you might not like want to do but that you end up wanting to do but definitely in the medic in these classes you will step out of your comfort zone and learn new things and be around all these people like I was really nervous being around doctors and nurses and I was like am I asking the right questions do I sound dumb asking these questions but they definitely did were very helpful and so were my teachers and also being a part of like even if you don't want to go take these medical classes because you don't aren't certain if you want to go to the medical field you can still be and join our club which is HOSA and you can be around like kids who are probably confused too or that want to go into the medical field and don't know if they should take the classes. Very cool. So can you tell me a little bit about what HOSA does? And as HOSA we we're just a group of a bunch of probably people who want to go into the medical field who we just meet every month and talk about different things that we can do for the community community like we um, talk about helping at the hospice or we like visit nursing homes and just hang out with them and stuff we helped with food drives and stuff we've had we have blood drives at school if people want to donate and, and they can get money from donating so wow okay so if you might you might want to crowd up so I can ask all of you about this too you guys have to balance i mean you're in you all are president of a club it sounds like you guys said uh you're involved in all of these volunteer activities you're taking on all of this really interesting but intensive work how do you guys balance this out like i know for me um sometimes it's difficult emma and i are in varsity choir together um and as we said we're all three of us are presidents of different clubs um and sometimes life gets a little overwhelming um but I personally am not a procrastinator at all, so when I get something, I'm like, even if it's super early, I'm going to get it done because I may not know. Like, if something's due on Friday and I get it on Monday, I'm going to do it Monday because I don't know what's going to happen, and I may be super busy Friday, or I may pop up and go to the radio station on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> this is I don't, true. I don't know what's going to happen, so I try to get everything done as quick as possible, and that's just, that's my personal way of taking care of life, I guess. But, and it sounds like also you guys have other interests to that, so you don't burn out on one set of interests. Does that kind of help as well, being involved in other things? Yes. yes. We, as, sorry, okay. as Journey said, um, we are in varsity choir. Um, I love singing. It's also, I kind of see music and math and science kind of all as the same thing. Like, it takes a lot of brain work, and so it's kind of, it's totally different side of um the creative or mathematical I don't know what word to describe it but I think I'm kind of all in the same direction generally but Journey said she's not a procrastinator I am probably the worst one <laughs> like she said if she gets something on Monday it's due Friday I will do it Thursday night so th I, it's not a great way for me to handle my stress <laughs> but somehow it all works so I I don't know how I do it but I'm always stressed but you know it's 
It'll look good on a resume. Well, you were about to say something too. Yes. Okay. So I was in sports, but I was getting to the point where I was really stressed with everything I had going on. So I actually quit sports because I was like, I'm going, I want to go to, like, I know I want to go to college for medical school instead of like going to college for sports. Like now I focus more on medical school, like, or going to medical school and things that I need to do to go to medical school. And whenever I get stressed, I like to like make sure I like for the next few days so I'm not more stressed I have everything planned out like I'm also a procrastinator so it, sometimes it gets the best of me but I just learned to deal with it and work through it next week on student live student voices we'll have an opportunity to hear from culinary arts students at the Fredericksburg ISD who are involved in the culinary arts pathway we'll also get to hear from Yes, we'll be hearing from a younger group of students about things that are matter to them and issues that they care about. Because you know, of course, Joseph Financial Partners is a proud sponsor of Student Life, Student Voices. They offer independent financial advice in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and insurance. They're here to educate and assist you with all of your financial needs, and they hold themselves to a fiduciary standard, meaning they place your needs above their own. Their mission, to partner with their clients on all of their significant financial decisions by providing independent advice, appropriate education, and extraordinary service, all delivered with the integrity that holds your financial needs above their own. Please visit Joseph Financial Partners at josephfinancialpartners.com and find out why so many have placed their trust in this extraordinary Hill Country financial team. josephfinancialpartners.com This is Steve Maxwell, Sales Director here at HC Broadcasting, and I'm careful about giving personal endorsements, but Ken Stoppel Ford in Kerrville is a no-brainer. I recommend them without reservation. My wife bought the last truck we purchased from Ken Stopel, and she told me she will never buy from another car dealer. They won't be satisfied until you are happy with the service you receive. That's why Ford Motor Company gave them their President's Award. Ford dealers get this when they meet or exceed customer expectations in every department. They also give back to Hill Country schools and communities. I asked my friend Terry Massey, their general manager, if they would help with our radio show about bullying. He didn't ask me what Ken Stopel would get out of the sponsorship. He just said, sign us up. That's the Stopels I know. The next time you need a vehicle or service, go see the folks that really care about people in the Hill Country. Go see Ken Stopel Ford. Find them at StopelFord.com. We want to make sure that any of our listeners understand help is available from many sources. There is always hope and nothing is inevitable. There are school counselors, reporting systems at schools, and even help through hotlines such as the 988 system. If you or someone you know is experiencing a mental health crisis, call 988 for assistance. Or contact Texas Health and Human Services at 855-937-2372 to talk to a trained professional. Thank you for listening to Student Live Student Voices, brought to you by our sponsors, Ken Stopel Ford, Central Texas Electric Co-op, Totality Over Texas, Vogel Tractors, Joseph Financial Partners, Medical Arts Pharmacy, and Celebrity Care Medical Clinic.